A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum is a musical with music and lyrics by Stephen Sondheim and book by Bert Shevelov and Larry Gelbart. Inspired by the farces of the ancient Roman playwright Plautus, specifically Pseudolus, Miles Gloriosus, and Mostalaria, the musical tells the body story of a slave named Pseudolus and his attempts to win his freedom by helping his young master with a girl next door. The plot displays many classic elements of farce, including puns, the slamming of doors, cases of mistaken identity, and satirical comments on social class. The title derives from a line often used by vaudeville comedians to begin a story, a funny thing happened on the way to the theater. The musical's original 1962 Broadway run won several Tony Awards, including Best Musical and Best Author. A Funny Thing has enjoyed several Broadway and West End revivals and was made into a successful film starring the original lead of the stage musical, Zero Mostel. A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum opened on Broadway on May 8, 1962, at the Alvin Theatre and then transferred to the Mark Hellinger Theatre and the Majestic Theatre. Where the show closed on August 29, 1964, after 964 performances and eight previews. The show's creators originally wanted Phil Silvers in the lead role of Pseudolus, but he turned them down, allegedly because he would have to perform on stage without his glasses, and his vision was so poor that he feared tripping into the orchestra pit. He is also quoted as turning down the role for being Sergeant Bilko in Atoga. Milton Berle also passed on the role. Eventually, Zero Mostel was cast. During the out-of-town pre-Broadway tryouts the show was attracting little business and not playing well. Jerome Robbins was called in to give advice and make changes. The biggest change Robbins made was a new opening number to replace Love is in the Air and introduce the show as a body, wild comedy. Stephen Sondheim wrote the song Comedy Tonight for this new opening. From that point on, the show was a success. It was directed by George Abbott and produced by Hal Prince, with choreography by Jack Cole and uncredited staging and choreography by Robbins. The scenic and costume design was by Tony Walton. This wardrobe is on display at the Costume World Broadway Collection in Pompano Beach, Florida. The lighting design was by Gene Rosenthal. Along with Mostel, the musical featured a cast of seasoned performers, including Jack Guilford, David Burns, John Carradine, Ruth Cobart, and Raymond Walburn. The young lovers were played by Brian Davis and Preshi Marker. Karen Black, originally cast as the ingenue, was replaced out of town. The show won several Tony Awards, Best Musical. Best Actor, Best Supporting Actor, Best Book, and Best Director. The score, however, was coolly received. It was Sondheim's first musical on Broadway in which he wrote both the music and lyrics, and it did not earn a nomination for Best Original Score. The show was presented twice in London's West End. The 1963 production and its 1986 revival were staged at the Strand Theatre and the Piccadilly Theatre respectively, and starred Frankie Howard as Pseudolus and Leon Green as Miles Gloriosus in both. In the 1963 production, Kenneth Connor appeared as Hysterium, Masur Eddie Gray as Senex and John Pertwee as Marcus Lycus. In the 1986 revival, Patrick Cargo was Senex with Ronnie Stevens as Hysterium and Derek Royal as Erroneous. In 2004 there was a limited-run revival at the Royal National Theatre, starring Desmond Barrett as Pseudolus, Philip Quast as Miles Gloriosus, Hamish McCall as Hysterium and Isla Blair as Domina. This production was nominated for the 2005 Olivier Award, Outstanding Musical Production. A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum was made into a musical film in 1966, directed by Richard Lester, with Mostel and Guilford recreating their Broadway stage roles. Leon Green reprising his West End stage role, and Phil Silvers in an expanded role as Marcus Lycus. David Burns did not return for the film role of Senex, which was played in the film by Michael Hordern. Buster Keaton made his final film appearance in the role of Erroneous. A revival opened on Broadway at the Lund Fontana Theatre on April 4, 1972 and closed on August 12, 1972 after 156 performances. Directed by co-author Bert Shevel of the cast starred Phil Silvers as Pseudolus, Lou Parker as Senex, Carl Ballantine as Lycus and Reginald Owen as Erroneous. Larry Blyden, who played Hysterium, the role created by Jack Gilford, also co-produced. Pretty Little Picture and That'll Show Him were dropped from the show, and were replaced with Echo Song, and Farewell. Echo Song and Farewell had been added to a production staged in Los Angeles the previous year and were composed by Sondheim. They had to close soon after Phil Silver suffered a stroke. The show won two Tony Awards, Best Leading Actor in a Musical for Silvers, and Best Featured Actor in a Musical for Blyden. 
The musical was revived again with great success in 1996, opening at the Street James Theatre on April 18, 1996 and closing on January 4, 1998 after 715 performances. The cast starred Nathan Lane as Pseudolus, Mark Lindbaker as Hysterium, Ernie Sabaya as Lycus, Jim Stanick as Hero, Louis J. Stadlin as Senex, and Chris Krunendahl as Miles Gloriosus. The production was directed by Jerry Zaks, with choreography by Rob Marshall. Lane won the 1996 Tony Award for Best Leading Actor in the Drama Desk Award, Outstanding Actor in a Musical. The production was nominated for the 1996 Tony Award and Drama Desk Award, Revival of a Musical. Every actor who has opened in the role of Pseudolus on Broadway has won a Best Leading Actor Tony Award for his performance. In addition, Jason Alexander, who performed as Pseudolus in one scene in Jerome Robbins' Broadway, also won a Tony for Best Actor in a Musical. The original Australian production with American actor Jack Collins as Pseudolus opened at the Theatre Royal in Sydney in July 1964, and toured other Australian cities through 1965. In 1998, John English starred as Pseudolus in SG Entertainment's production that opened New Year's Day at the State Theatre, Melbourne and toured Australia and New Zealand, closing September 1999. The Stephen Sondheim Centre for the Performing Arts produced a limited-run revival of the musical from January 11 to 27, 2008. The production was directed by Randall K. West, with Justin Hill as musical director and Adam Cates as choreographer. The cast featured Richard Kind as Pseudolus, Joel Bloom as Senex, Stephen DeRosa as Marcus Lycus, Sean McCall as Hysterium, and Steve Wilson as Miles Gloriosus. It also featured Diane Upton Hill, Ryan Gaffney, Stephen Mark Crisp, Jack Kloppenborg, and Margaret Clare. The Chung Ying Theatre Company in Hong Kong staged a Cantonese version of the musical at Kwai Sing Theatre, to celebrate the company's 30th anniversary. It was directed by Chung King Fai and Ko Tin Lung and ran from 14 to March 21, 2009. The Stratford Shakespeare Festival in Stratford, Ontario, Canada production ran from June 11 to November 7, 2009, with Dave McCaniff directing and Wayne Salento as choreographer. Bruce Dow originally performed the role of Pseudolus, but was forced to withdraw from the entire 2009 season due to an injury, and the role was then performed by Sean Cullen as of September 5, 2009. Stephen Wiemet played Hysterium. Mervish Productions presented the earlier Stratford production at the Cannon Theatre, Toronto, in December 2010 through January 2011. Bruce Dow and Sean Cullen were alternates in the lead role. In October 2012 the play opened at Her Majesty's Theatre, Melbourne, Australia, with Geoffrey Rush as Pseudolus, Magda Sabansky as Domina and Shane Bourne as Senex. A funny thing happened on the way to the forum was produced at the Two River Theatre in Red Bank, New Jersey from November 14, 2015 to December 13, 2015 with an all-male cast, Paul Castry. Eddie Cooper, Kevin Isola, David Josephsberg, Max Kumangai, Graham Rowett, Manny Stark, Bobby Conti Thornton, David Turner, Michael Urie, Tom Deckman, and Christopher Fitzgerald. Graphic from the original Broadway cast album in Ancient Rome, some neighbors live in three adjacent houses. In the center is the house of Senex, who lives there with wife Domina, son Hero, and several slaves, including head slave Hysterium and the musical's main character Pseudolus. A slave belonging to Hero, Pseudolus wishes to buy, win, or steal his freedom. One of the neighboring houses is owned by Marcus Lycus, who is a buyer and seller of beautiful women, the other belongs to the ancient Erroneus, who is abroad searching for his long-lost children. One day, Senex and Domina go on a trip and leave Pseudolus in charge of Hero. Hero confides in Pseudolus that he is in love with the lovely Philia, one of the courtesans in the house of Lycus. Pseudolus promises to help him win Philia's love in exchange for his own freedom. Unfortunately, Philia has been sold to the renowned warrior Miles Gloriosus, who is expected to claim her very soon. Pseudolus, an excellent liar, uses Philia's cheery disposition to convince Lycus that she has picked up a plague from Crete, which causes its victims to smile endlessly in its terminal stages. By offering to isolate her in Senex's house, he is able to give Philia and Hero some time alone together, and the two fall in love. But Philia insists that, even though she is in love with Hero, she must honor her contract with the captain, for that is the way of a courtesan. To appease her. He tells her to wait inside, and that he will have the captain knock three times when he arrives. Pseudolus comes up with a plan to slip Philia a sleeping potion that will render her unconscious. He will then tell Lycus that she has died of the Cretan plague, and will offer to remove the body. 
Hero will come along, and they will stow away on a ship headed for Greece. Satisfied with his plan, Pseudolus steals Hysterium's book of potions and has Hero read him the recipe for the sleeping potion. The only ingredient he lacks is Mare's sweat, and Pseudolus goes off in search of some. Unexpectedly, Senex returns home early from his trip, and knocks three times on his own door. Philia comes out of the house, and, thinking that Senex is the captain, offers herself up to him. Surprised but game, Senex instructs Philia to wait in the house for him, and she does. Hysterium arrives to this confusion, and tells Senex that Philia is the new maid that he has hired. Pseudolus returns, having procured the necessary mare's sweat, seeing that Senex has returned unexpectedly and grasping the need to keep him out of the way. Pseudolus discreetly sprinkles some of the horse sweat onto him, then suggests that the road trip has left Senex in dire need of a bath. Taking the bait, Senex instructs Hysterium to draw him a bath in the long-abandoned house of Eronius. But while this is happening, Eronius returns home, finally having given up the search for his long-lost children. Hysterium, desperate to keep him out of the house where his master is bathing, tells the old man that his house has become haunted, a story seemingly confirmed by the sound of Senex singing in his bath. Eronius immediately determines to have a soothsayer come and banish the spirit from his house, and Pseudolus obligingly poses as one, telling Eronius that, in order to banish the spirit, he must travel seven times around the seven hills of Rome. When Miles Gloriosus arrives to claim his courtesan bride, Pseudolus hides Philia on the roof of Senex's house, told that she has escaped, Lycus is terrified to face the captain's wrath. Pseudolus offers to impersonate Lycus and talk his way out of the mess but, his ingenuity flagging, he ends up merely telling the captain that Philia has disappeared, and that he, Lycus, will search for her. Displeased and suspicious, Miles insists that his soldiers accompany Pseudolus, but the wily slave loses them in Rome's winding streets. Complicating matters further, Domina returns from her trip early, suspicious that her husband Senex is up to something low. She disguises herself in virginal white robes and a veil to try to catch Senex being unfaithful. Pseudolus convinces Hysterium to help him by dressing in drag and pretending to be Philia, dead from the plague. Unfortunately, it turns out that Miles Gloriosus has just returned from Crete, where there is of course no actual plague. With the ruse thus revealed, the main characters run for their lives, resulting in a madcap chase across the stage with both Miles and Senex pursuing all three Philia s. Meanwhile, the courtesans from the house of Marcus Lycus, who had been recruited as mourners at Philia's Erzot's funeral, have escaped, and Lycus sends his eunuchs out to bring them all back, adding to the general pandemonium. Finally, the captain's troops are able to round everyone up. His plot thoroughly unraveled, Pseudolus appears to be in deep trouble, but Erroneus, completing his third circuit of the Roman hills, shows up fortuitously to discover that Miles Gloriosus and Philia are wearing matching rings which mark them as his long-lost children. Philia's betrothal to the captain is nullified by the unexpected revelation that he's her brother, and, as the daughter of a freeborn citizen, she's freed from Marcus Lycus. Philia weds Hero, Pseudolus gets his freedom and a lovely courtesan Gymnasia, Gloriosus receives twin courtesans to replace Philia, and Erroneus is reunited with his children. A happy ending prevails for all, except for poor Senex, stuck with his shrewish wife Domina. Notes Notes Bibliography Thanks for watching.